What's going on summoners? My name is Nathan Ng and I'll be your host for our upcoming changes video. This video will give you some information about what changes you can expect to see hit the live server's next patch 12.20. In it, I'll provide you guys with the champions and system changes that you can expect to see. I know there are plenty of changes that you're all excited for, so make sure you stay tuned. Just note that while these changes are typically accurate, they're not final. There can be some tweaks, additions, or last minute removals of them. So, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content like this, most notably our patch rundown next week. With all that being said, let's get the video started. First, we'll run through the upcoming skins. The Bewitching Anivia, Cassiopeia, LeBlanc, Nico, and Three Honors Malzahar are making their way to Summer's Rift very soon. The Bewitching skin lines are here just in time for Halloween, so be on the lookout, especially if you like to get in the spirit of the holidays. For the good sports out on Summoner's Rift, Three Honors Malzahar will be rewarded for reaching the honor level 5, so keep at it. That covers the skin, so let's talk about the upcoming changes next. Beginning with system nerfs, we have one coming up for Lethal Tempo. This is definitely a nerf, but in some cases, you may not even notice it. The bonus range to Keystone Grants will be reduced from 75 to 50. Again, it's going to depend on the context. If your opponent is running away from you, you might end up dropping the attack summer during your fight as opposed to its current state. In an alt-right brawl, however, you're not going to notice the change at all. Frozen Heart is receiving a few adjustments, ultimately nerfing it. The cost is being increased, base armor being raised, but the damage reduction passive is being lowered. Overall, it's definitely a nerf especially with that cost increase making it a harder item to complete. For buffs, the first item on the list is Mortal Reminder. It's currently an unpopular item for various reasons. Most marksman players opt to invest in a lot more damage, or instead other utility like Guardian Angel. However, Riot wants an incentive to build the item, allowing for more creativity in team comps, and also allowing other roles to instead forego the healing reduction. To trigger Grievous Wounds, you'll only need to basic attack your target twice rather than three times next patch. This is huge as it makes the main reason that you buy this item much more accessible than before. However, I still think the healing reduction will be built on other roles as your items honestly provide a better set of stats and mortal reminder. Sarah's Gage is receiving buffs all across the board. It's going to have its bonus AD, shield, and shield duration increased. Since the shield decays, extending its duration will probably slow down its rate of decay. Fighter and Juggernaut players are going to be benefiting heavily from these massive buffs. An upcoming adjustment is for Demonic Embrace. The bonus health and range champion burn damage is being reduced, but in return is having some more AP. Riot Froxen noted that this is intended to make it a weaker one-item damage splash for magic damage tanks like Zac and Amumu. However, Battle Mages will likely be able to better abuse the extra ability power moving forward. That covers the system changes, so we'll move on to the champions next. Our very first champion is set in the top lane. He's receiving durability nerfs to his starting magic resistance and his passive regeneration at early levels. However, his Q's bonus AD ratio will be raised, making him much more rewarding pick later on into the game. Ultimately, the goal of these changes is to leave him roughly power neutral, but the loss of magic resistance should open up some potential counterpicks moving forward. I'm certain a lot of you guys have been begging for some Aatrox nerfs, and they're coming next patch. Some of you might be disappointed, however, to hear that only his passive healing is taking a hit. It's a solid nerf, however, as the healing from it will be reduced by 20%. During team fights and even during trades in the laning phase, this loss of health can really be a deciding factor. With less sustain, counterpicks should have an easier time abusing him and setting him behind. By the way, if you're looking to learn how to effectively counterpick champions or learn new strategies to help you pull ahead, make sure you contact one of our coaches at ProGuides.com. Our experts are not only friendly, but also great at what they do, having already helped countless students achieve their ranked goals. Next up, we have Maokai. His passive ceiling is set to be reduced, while his ultimate cooldown is going to be raised at later ranks. He's currently too reliable and with less sustain, he should be a little bit easier to defeat in the early game, or at least have a harder time to safely farm up. It's a pretty significant increase on his ultimate he's set to receive, so our analysts are definitely going to be keeping an eye on his stats next patch. For buffs, the first one we'll cover are Jace's. He's going to be getting some huge set of buffs to his melee form. His mana restoration on his W will be increased quite substantially, and the bonus resists that he gains from hammer form will include AD scaling moving forward. That extra durability should make him much more rewarding than before, making it less of a risk for players to leap into the team fights. Back to his W, however, the mana restoration is going to be increased by 4 at all ranks, making him significantly less mana starved early on. Playing well early and poking down enemies will let you really milk these upcoming buffs once you can farm your melee form. Wukong is also receiving a buff that was intended to help him out as a top laner. However, it'll definitely help him out in any role because all he's receiving is an increased AD ratio on his ultimate. It's straightforward and impactful, he's getting more damage. Gwen is also receiving a buff next patch. Her Q's damage at later ranks is receiving a solid buff, significantly raising her dueling and teamfighting strength in the mid and late game. Already a great pick when looking for a champion that scales into the late game, this buff will help solidify Gwen's role as a go-to top AP laner. That covers the top lane, so we'll move into the jungle next. Evelyn is first in the jungle as she's set to receive some small buffs. While seemingly insignificant, they'll certainly take her a long way when paired together. Her Q's mark damage as well as W's charm duration will both be increased next patch. 
That extra CC should be enough to cast another Q, or even allow an ally or herself to fit in one more attack. Especially in the early game, that extra damage is a huge deal, and the potential consequences for the enemy team are exponentially threatening. Moving forward, let me ask you our question of the day. What changes have you enjoyed the most recently? I'm glad that they're trying to buff Jungle Blitzcrank even more, because I'm having a lot of fun with him in normal games. Let me know your answers in the comments down below, and let's move on to our next jungle change. Another change in the jungle is for Ramus. He recently had his W's calculation methods changed, resulting in him being weaker than intended. To compensate for this unexpected loss of strength, he's going to be receiving buffs next patch in the form of his ultimate movement speed growth and his W no longer slowing his movement speed. With a significant buff via extra mobility, we expect to see more players pick him, especially as a counter to heavy AD comps. With more backline access, he should have an easier time contributing to fights. As the quality of life change, Elisa's Q range is being adjusted. Rather than calculating from the center of the target, it'll now calculate a slightly lower range but instead begin from their edges. While it's to put him here, we're going to talk about the upcoming Blitzcrank changes as well. He was recently adjusted to become a viable jungler, but it surprisingly made him a much stronger support instead. His popularity has increased significantly as an off-roll jungler, but his win rate is still lower than where Riot would want him to be. To balance out the disparity in his different roles' win rates, he's up for some base stat nerfs across the table. Notably, his mana shield will now scale with level, making it far less impactful during early game skirmishes. His E's AD ratio will be lowered, but in compensation, his W and E's non-champion bonus damage are going to be increased as well. More importantly, however, his E will sometimes send jungle monsters to the moon when he kills them with it. Nice. This will probably raise his jungle win rate slightly, but not as much as I imagine Riot expects it to with the upcoming nerfs as well. However, he has a 54% win rate as a support, so I'm sure it was a tough task to handle. That covers the jungle, so we'll wrap up the changes with the mid lane. The last change of the video, we have Ziggs receiving a solid 10 damage buff to his Q. Given his low cooldown and the fact that it's a poke tool, you shouldn't underestimate this buff. We might see more Ziggs played in the bottom lane as well because of it. That concludes our upcoming changes for patch 12.20. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to let us know what your thoughts are in the comments below, as well as any feedback for us. You can also read through the description for a link to join our Discord, where you can be the first to learn about any future giveaways and events. If you have any other personal feedback for me, let me know on my twitch.tv slash Nathan underscore ING, as I would love to talk with you guys and just chat, you know, maybe have a good time. Anyway, take care everybody, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.